Run defense in college football 25 might be the most important thing that you have to have if you're gonna have any hope at winning consistently online. A lot of people are struggling to stop the run. So today's video, we're gonna be going over tips that you can use to immediately improve your run defense no matter what it is that you run. Let's start it off with number one. You must, must, must learn how to gap shoot runs in this game. Your user is the most important player on the field in college football. And to be frank, over the last several years of Madden, we become spoiled with gap shooting being so incredibly easy. When it comes to shooting runs, you have to understand how your offensive line works. So in a situation like this, where we're defending a inside zone type run, one of the best ways to combat this is to call a four down lineman defense. If you guys are in a three, three style playbook, you have the three, three over you can use a very similar tactic to this. By pinching your defensive line so that you have two defensive tackles, this is gonna make it tough for the interior three offensive linemen to combo block up to the second level. The most important player on an inside zone is arguably the weak side linebacker. We gotta be able to keep him clean. So in order to do this, our user oftentimes has to creep into the box and we're going to learn how to gap shoot through the middle. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to lock my user in place. To do this, we're going to hit A or X on PlayStation. We're going to flick the right analog stick up. This is going to bring up the individual coverage menu in which you are locked in place. So now you can hold the stick down to be able to time the snap as soon as the ball is snapped, it's gonna open up and you can fly in and make a tackle. This is called a gap shoot and it is something that you should become familiar with in any defense that you run in College Football 25. So let's say for instance, I'm not a player that plays out of the nickel over. Let's say for whatever reason, we're in a 3-3 mint style defense. In a three down lineman defense, I think it's very important that you cover the center with your nose tackle. You don't wanna be shifted to the left or to the right don't get me wrong, you can still find gap shoots from these alignments, maybe by kind of hiding and, and trying to fly into the front side gap. But like I said, the climb logic in this game is so good. Notice here in this example, how the center is able to get a climb up to that second level and the guard is able to cross face of that nose tackle in a situation where 77, you wouldn't expect to be able to get across the face without a double team help. This is where I'm saying the offensive line logic is so good. It makes it tougher to shoot out of three down lineman sets. The secret to this is really to kind of hide behind your nose tackle and have him directly cover the center. So that way you can go ahead and kind of hide here. And then when the ball snapped, you're gonna shoot into the front side A gap, making that same tackle. So in a four down lineman set, you're kind of shooting the weak side A gap from a pinch defensive line. In a three down lineman defense, you're shooting the other A gap so you can fly through like this. So you're gonna be able to lab this concept against the inside zone. Where it becomes a little bit more dangerous for you is when they start to add extra linemen. But before we get to that, make sure you guys are subscribed right here to the Zan Madden YouTube channel. Obviously we're doing a lot of College Football 25 content. I hope you guys are enjoying the game as much as I am. And if you are, you should still check out my strategy website, gridirongameplans.gg. I have extended our college football pre-sale. At this point, everyone has it. It's really just a sale at this point. You guys can unlock everything I will do in College Football 25 all year long for one upfront payment. You can even combo this on a monthly basis with the Madden membership with 25 coming out here in about a month. Or you can take a look at our combo Madden and College Football 25 presale where you'll get every single bit of content. That's all vault updates, all offensive and defensive game plans for both games and members only discord access where we're going to have lab sessions for Madden when the Madden season starts every single week as well. Now, as I mentioned, it starts to get a little bit hairy when you start to add extra linemen and or tight ends into the equation. Let's take a look here at this gun trips tight end offset weak inside zone. Going back to our four down lineman setup, I'm going to go ahead and pinch our defensive line. And I'm going to show you here, we're going to take our user. And again, it's important that we're shooting kind of that weak side gap. But you're going to notice from time to time that due to that extra tight end, they're going to block this up cleanly. So when it comes to adding in extra players, this is where our second most important concept comes in. Mugging the gap directly behind a defensive tackle is nice, but unless they don't have a tight end in the picture, that is the only way you can do this. So obviously you just saw our situation where we kind of shot the gap just like so. This is fine against a five man offensive line with no one else attached. When they have a tight end, the key is actually to step further back away from the line. Because when you're standing closer to the line, the user, which is the most unpredictable player on the field, 
from an AI perspective becomes a primary player to block. When you have five linemen on the field and five players, it becomes a little bit easier to trick the logic. But when you're kind of in a situation where they have six, it changes the way that the front is blocked. So to kind of protect from the center, being able to kind of peel back to us, we wanna actually take a step further back. And the reason for that is that when you step further back, the AI becomes less concerned with you. So what I do against these types of formations is I step back to about six yards off the ball and I will still do the manual lock-in trick by hitting A, right stick up. And this further distance allows me to shoot the gap cleanly because the center does not expect me to fly straight through the middle. So notice when we add an extra lineman or a tight end to the equation here that this depth trick is gonna be very, very useful. You see that the center is going to apply the combo double team with the guard and I'm able to fly back in. The other great part about this is that you also have the ability to free up and keep clean your teammate, meaning that if you don't make the tackle, that teammate is able to fly in through the B gap and make pursuit. If they bounce it to the outside, we have extra levels of depth and we'll get to that momentarily on how to improve that extra depth with another tip. So right here with this formation, technically this tight end is not in the offensive line. He is flexed a couple steps away. There might be a chance that they are able to block you, but we're gonna start off with hiding behind this defensive tackle, locking in and trying to fly in through the A-gap. If the center is able to block you, this still will help keep other players clean, but that's gonna be a tell that if that happens, you need to go back to the magic spot. When in doubt, this is the most consistent place to stand, okay? So if you're ever confused, if you haven't faced a formation before and you don't know the blocking logic, this is the place to stand against any type of shotgun zone run because you can stand six yards off the ball, you know for a fact they're gonna double team someone else and that's gonna open up a gap for you to fly in. So this is far and away the best place to stand in your defense if you're looking for a clean gap shoot. Keep in mind that, you know, on a third down and one, this could be a tackle for loss bringing up a fourth down and five. Keep in mind that on a fourth down and one, this could be a game changing gap shoot. So having this in your arsenal, this whole trick of just kind of standing, you know, over the A gap or over the center, six yards off the ball, so it's far enough that the center doesn't look at you. And with that ball is snapped, flying in and making this tackle from depth is far and away the best way to change games on the fly. So that is how to gap shoot. One thing I do want to mention is that there are going to be other run concepts in this game that aren't zone based. Inside zone, very easy to stop. You can use this for RPOs as well. But once they start to get into more of like the power game, whether it's a base or a halfback power from shotgun, now we're going to start to deal with pulling linemen. And this is going to change the way that you might gap shoot things. So keep in mind with this, with a pulling offensive lineman, you're oftentimes dealing with like for instance here, this guard, he's gonna lead out in front of everybody, which means that there's gonna be a giant A gap for you to be able to fly in from behind. Start to play around with lab and gap shoots against pulling lineman runs, because they actually are in a similar way, you could just fly straight in through the, the hole that they vacate. They're trying to lead for the running back on this. And you see that the gap to fly in is ginormous here on this. And not to mention our defense as a whole is great. So I wanted to add that little nuance as far as, you know, you're, you're pulling guard runs. Now, let's say that you're not a good gap shooter. Let's say you play in a structure, maybe a dynasty where they have rules against stuff like this. Okay, fine. Let's talk about some other tips. Now, the next thing that I want to share with you is the concept of run fits. Now, unfortunately, for whatever reason in uh the college football game as far as i know i've been looking if you guys know chime in in the comments section there's no real way to check run fits at least when i've been labbing with two controllers but it would be very irresponsible of me to not mention that different coverages have different run fits so when you talk about a cover two based defense this is a defense where the players involved in the run game are everybody but the deep safeties whereas if i were to call a cover three the players are involved are everyone but the deep thirds so let's say, for instance, we're dealing with a run that, you know, is an inside zone here. Let's say that they're doing a good job of, you know, getting outside the tackle and you're struggling to, you know, do a good job with this. Now, this purple zone on the backside is technically in the run fit. So this is a great candidate to be able to fly down in addition to your gap shoot or whatever to be able to try to take that away. You see how he flies down and that's gonna allow you to kind of take the inside gaps while this player in the run fit is going to be responsible for kind of playing that 
contain role. He has to fly down and make sure the run stays inside. So a lot of times you guys write this off as like, oh, this is terrible pursuit by this safety. All he's doing is his job. He's getting down into this hypothetical gap to make sure that the run has to bounce inside. If you do your job and you know where to stand in your run fits, you're gonna be in a good spot. Now let's contrast that with the cover two defense. So with the cover two defense, one of the things that you need to understand is that safety is not coming down to help. The player that is actually playing that gap is now your corner. Keep in mind that there's an outside receiver that is going to block him on this particular play. So when we snap this ball, you now are in a spot where the guy that's technically responsible for the contain is being blocked. In a lot of cases, you think, oh, well, cover two is always the better run defense because your corner's involved. Well, if they're gonna block him with a receiver and that's gonna make it tough, maybe the cover three is actually the better call for you. And conversely, one of the things you guys should know is that if you play a cover four base defense, the safeties are actually involved. So this is one of the rare defenses where your deep zones can be involved. The two players of which on the field are not involved in the run fit are gonna be your outside corners. So one of the things that you're gonna notice with this is rather than Makuba coming down and trying to fill outside like he did in the cover three, what he's actually gonna do is he's gonna come down more in this area to be able to play his gap. And then you're gonna have, you know, the other gaps covered. Sometimes it'll be a linebacker playing, you know, uh, the, the contain and this guy here, this defensive end kind of crashing down. Everybody's got a job to do on this. So I wanna go ahead and respot the ball so you can kind of see the difference in how these players fly down to make this happen so let's snap the inside zone you see how you got that player coming down into the b gap alleyway and he cleans up on that second hit so this is something that you should definitely be aware of as it pertains uh you know stopping inside zones just understanding your run fits one thing that i do want to mention with this that can aid to your run fits is using your shell feature so if you flick the right analog stick on the play call menu, you're actually gonna notice that we could show different coverage shells. You could show a cover zero, a cover two man, a cover two zone, a cover three, a cover four, and a cover six. Now, depending on what defense you choose, those options might not all be available. But in general, let's say you wanted to run a cover three run fit, but you wanted to show a cover six zone. So what happens is everyone on your defense is showing cover six. Uh, here on this side, you've got the press outside corner that you would get with a cover six on the cover four side. Here on the weak side, you've got the cover two look, four plus two is six. So uh, basically what this does is it gives the illusion that they're pl we're playing a cover two to the back side. Maybe they decide that they wanna run their inside zone, but look who's coming down in that run protection. And now this is a gain of only three, as opposed to when we ran the cover two, it was a gain of about 12 to 15. So you can kind of show a coverage shell that would bait your opponent into running the ball, especially when you show too high. A lot of people think, oh, too high, the safeties aren't involved, let's run the ball, this will be easy. But you're actually in a defense where the safety is involved, so you can kind of bait your opponents into runs where your run fits are actually gonna do a pretty good job. One other sneaky feature that you guys might like that I wanna share with you is the cover zero. Uh, or even the two man under. The reason you might call one of these is that you get different leverages from your defenders. So let's go right back to maybe the cover two. Remember in the cover two defense, we had a situation where the corner was getting pinned. Well, if you play the two man under, you notice that his leverage is a little bit more inside. If I play a cover two show, you see that he backs off and plays outside leverage. This makes it much easier for that receiver to take a couple steps off the ball, be inside so it's easy to seal him towards the sideline. You don't like that. So what you wanna do here is give this a, a cover two man look or maybe even a cover zero look. So that way that DB is lined up in a physical role, ready to engage. He's on the inside and he wants to block shed immediately. So you see right there, look at how he's able to get off that block. And um, I'd like to see if maybe we could get that as a side by side and go back several minutes to the cover two versus the cover two with the two man under look. This is a very sneaky adjustment that I think you guys might appreciate. And actually this tip is brought to you by Gridiron Game Plans. This is something that 
that I showed in our vault not too long ago. So make sure that you guys are checking out Gridiron if that's something you guys really, really enjoy. This is a, a great secret that not a lot of players know about with this game is that showing a shell for the purpose of run fits is just as important as confusing your opponent as to what coverage you're running. Keep that in the back of your mind at all times. Now, obviously, we have to talk about option. Option is something that is tough, man. It, it is super, super difficult. Um, you've got triple options. You've got speed options. You've got load options. You've got flex bone style play. You've got a bunch of different things you have to worry about in addition to your run fits. And now all of a sudden, teams are starting to take players out of your defense by optioning them. What do they say in real life? If you can't block them, read them. So let's go ahead and call a traditional option style run. We'll go into concepts, option, uh, go to a read option. Now with a read option style run, what this does is it places a R icon over your defender. This player is very, very important because you have a job to do as a defensive player. You need to make sure that you are choosing to play either the running back or the quarterback on a given down. On the defensive side, you're gonna hit right bumper and then you're gonna to choose to play the quarterback or the running back based off of A or X. That would be your X or square buttons on PlayStation. In this situation, I'm gonna hit option running back. What that's gonna do is it's gonna tell the read man to attempt to fly in off the edge and tackle the running back. Sometimes he's gonna to be too far away to do so. So be aware that where you line him up just because you option running back doesn't mean he's going to make the tackle if your opponent guesses wrong. There's going to be fronts where it's a long way to go for him. So keep that in mind here with this. But when they do this, you see that he kind of walks down and takes that cut back lean away. This comes at the risk of the quarterback on certain downs being able to pull the ball. So be aware that if you are playing option running back, your responsibility with your user is going to be to get down and outside. Now, this is going to be really, really hard for me to do. Uh, but again, when they go ahead and pull with the quarterback, you need to be flying down and making this tackle on your own. OK, just kind of understand if you're sending the read man at the running back, you need to loop around him and take the quarterback. You can also, from your coach menu, for what it is worth, make sure that you guys go in. And if you don't want to do this every down on the field, you can hit the right stick in and then go to your option defenses. If you take your read key and you play it on conservative, the defensive end is going to stand up and prevent the quarterback from taking the run. In these situations, you need to be running the gap shoot style defenses that I showed you earlier because it's very important that you do your job and get through. Also keep in mind that just because they're running a read option, this might change the way that their offensive line blocks you as a gap shooter. So lab against read options, sometimes they're blocked differently than inside zones, even though they're similar run schemes. You also have the ability to play option defense with a pitch key. So this is gonna apply to more of your load option style runs, so, or your speed option style runs. So with these types of runs, what you actually wanna do here is you wanna choose option defense and set this to either conservative or aggressive. Now, in my experience testing this, this is backwards. It says when you're on aggressive that it leaves the quarterback open on the option. And it says when you're on conservative that it leaves the pitch open. I believe that conservative actually guards the pitch and I'm gonna show you why. So we run this here, look at this P icon. If I wanted to actually snap and pitch the ball, see how that pitch icon actually was standing up with the running back. Now here's where this extra tip comes in. And this is another gridiron game plans tip right here. Notice for whatever reason, this guy was playing the pitch man and then he decided not to. I don't know why that's the case, but if you 1000% know that a speed option is coming, man up the running back with the player that's the P icon. That way, when they go to run this, you'll see that he stays on him in coverage and makes the tackle. So this is a great way to make sure that you handle this. And also keep in mind that if you wanna do this when it comes to you know your flex bone style options, you'll need to lab that accordingly. But whoever the P icon is in your defense against a flex bone, if you do the man up trick on that player and you're on conservative, you'll stay on the pitch as well. So I know a lot of players struggle with the triple option. Apply that in principle. I've got one final tip here for you that I think is pretty glitchy. And um, this is something that is a break glass in case of emergency tip. I've used this in Madden before, but this is basically to kind of teach you guys, zones are very passive. They drop very deep off the line, which makes stopping the run difficult. That's why this video is a thing to begin with. If you ever want to, you know they're running the ball, but you want to play zone. Set your zones to zero. Um, this is going to make it so when they do run the ball, everybody that is in a zone of the corresponding color to what you set to zero is going to step towards the line of scrimmage. So if you were to imagine 
this guy's not going to have to read anything. If he's a pass player, he's being told to fly down to zero. If it ends up being a run, his first step is going to be forward. So that way he's, you know, doing it in high gear. So let's go ahead and just kind of show you here. I snap this ball. See how everybody's first step is forward. And this kind of ends up being a, a run stop that you wouldn't expect. If I were to be, you know, in a traditional, like, let me reset my zones. So um, I'm going to reset my, my zone drops. So now they're standard. Uh, and I'm going to flip the play again. So that way they stay that way. Um, you will actually see that the inside zone pops differently and the guys react in a different way. So you don't really want to, you know, just go out there and play standard zone drops if you know the run is coming. So you got a fourth down and one. You want to set up a gap shoot, but your gap shoot might not work. Maybe they run a read option. Backing this up with a zero yard setting is actually quite good. So there you guys have it. Bunch of tips to help you out with the run game. We covered a lot of gap shooting tips, run fit tips, some glitchy zone assignment depth tips, some shell tips. You guys can use all these together to play much better run defense. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll be back later this afternoon with a YouTube short, and we'll be back here tomorrow with another long form video upload. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel and check out Gridiron Gameplay. And I'll see you guys later. Until then, this is Ann. Get the lab and good luck.